Okay, so I think everyone transferred from the waiting room um, to the main webinar. A warm welcome from the Chavi user group. Um, I'm Patrick, one of the board members of the Chavi user group, and I'm going to introduce you to the talk of Jonathan. So you know, today we will have a talk of um, or about new features of Java 15 in action. And I'm really looking forward to that because Jonathan is doing quite a lot of demos and we just can see him typing on the, on the shell, right? So before we go into the topic, now let's um, discuss a few things if you haven't participated yet in this kind of format from the Java user group. So we are doing this event now since the beginning of everything, of, of when everything has changed and in big marker. And you also know that we are publishing um, our talks afterwards, just a few days after like the webinar on YouTube. So um, make sure you subscribe also to your YouTube channel, because if you miss a talk, that means actually you can easily get notified about them. We also have um, a Slack channel. And actually that's quite nice. Sometimes after a talk like today, it could be that there is some further discussion going on in our Slack channel. Make sure you just um, sign up there and you will be part of the broader Java user group community. And after the talk, it's important that we get feedback from you. So that's why you will be forwarded automatically to the feedback form. So that's just like the same version like we would hand out in paper usually during our real life events, right? And what we also will do is we will um, provide one of you like every month um, a license of IntelliJ idea. So obviously the ultimate edition, right? Uh, we are in a live stream. So that means like the data gets processed on the server and it gets optimized for you, for your mobile devices or for your desktop. And that means actually you're always like 15 seconds behind the stream. So that's not usually a problem when we don't have too much interaction in the talk, but it might be that there are some weird pauses because we are waiting of your feedback or something like this. There is also a chat function in Big Marker. And if you have technical problems, if you just want to say hello to like your colleagues and friends, just use that function. Please do not use it for questions because put the questions in the Q&A section. If you accidentally add something, a question to your chat, we will move it to the Q&A section for you. So that's not a problem. But there we can actually um, maintain the question or let's say we can like see which one um, is answered and we can mark them as answered as well as you can vote for the question. So we see like what kind of uh, priority uh, a question will have when you upvote it, right? So that's actually quite nice to also like express your thing, your, um, your thing you want to have. So use that function as well. Now actually I'm heading over to Jonathan, I'm not going to read the introduction. This is just like what we um, published on the Chavi user group website, but I'm sure you introduce yourself in a better way than I would do. And I would say the stage is yours. Thank you, Patrick. <clears throat> uh, first of all, sorry for my voice. <clears throat> I'm still recovering from uh, the cold, which, yes, <laughs> came to me, um, but <clears throat> I hope uh, you can hear and understand me as well. <laughs> Good. So new features of Java 15 in action, that's the uh, title with my name under. By the way, I will try to, to show two dukes which are sitting next to me, uh, both from old good times of, of sun, and uh, hopefully, Dukes will help me to, to, do, every, to do everything good. A um, few words about me, as Patrick said, uh, yes, I will introduce myself. Um, so I'm a person which tries to improve environments, uh, not only IT, as you can see on the picture. Uh, I work as a senior consultant at Trivadis. I'm creator of 
class visualizer, uh, that's the tool. We will <coughs> see it also a little bit uh, today. It will help us to achieve something. Um, yes, that's for example, the view of, of a monster class string. Um, I'm doing a lot of things. There are many of, of my activities uh, published on the GitHub. Uh, you can take a, a look there afterwards uh, to my GitHub profile. I can, I can, for example, recommend you looking at, into the articles which I publish there. Um, what else? Um, yes, I'm using Java since very beginning, since version one. I'm using also many programming languages, uh, not only Java. Um, just to give you some some feeling, here is uh, this this line is from uh, the, those are statistics from some uh, programming competition, and here you can see just ten of the languages which I I used at that particular time. So uh, this helps me also to be open-minded and see the things from different perspectives. And uh, yes, of course, I'm using uh, my my skills, my know-how to help others as already mentioned. I'm also top-rated algorithmist. We will not dig into the, the details of that here, but if you are curious, you can you can take a look into my hacker rank profile, for example. Um, good day. Uh, let's start with a question. What do we understand by Java? Um, we can understand Java Virtual Machine. That's one, one possibility. Or Java Development Kit, or the programming language. But it is possible also that we will understand by Java the libraries, or bytecode, or source code. So just to a little bit uh, give a context, in this particular session, we will focus on the Java Virtual Machine and the programming language, Java programming language. We will maybe a little bit touch the, the standard library. Now, it's good to know that in Java ecosystem, when we are already talking about JVM and JDK, we have many options. You are not locked to one specific. Uh, you can choose what you would like to use. And this is very nice thing. <clears throat> but for example, if we are talking about JVM, we, we have Hotspot, which is the most popular one. But we have also OpenJ9 or there is also substrate. In the moment, I will come to the substrate again. Now, JDKs as well. The most popular is, of course, OpenJDK. Uh, that's the Oracle build. But there is also Adopt OpenJDK. And here, for example, Adopt OpenJDK comes in two variants, Hotspot and OpenJ9. Um, GraalVM is another possibility it's out of distribution uh, with, for example, alternative uh, just-in-time compiler plus some other tools. And if we are coming to nat native image, that's one of the of the tools being available in GraalVM. There is a topic of substrate VM. It's a, some minimalistic VM for the uh, executables which are compiled for the uh, platform. So many options, many possibilities uh, for people who are using Arch Linux like me, uh, then there are 117 packages uh, with, uh, for JDK. So really, really a good choice. And that's still not all because based on JVM and JDK, they are programming languages. Of course, Java is the, our primary focus today, um, but we have also Kotlin, Groovy, Scala, which uh, is good to know that they, they exist and they can be also used. Um, options discussed. So what is new in Java 15 now? Um, first of all, there are some news related to garbage collectors. Uh, we are focused now on hotspot VM. Yes, other, other VMs, other JVMs, have different garbage collectors. In case of Hotspot, that's the list which is currently available. Shenandoah and Z, those two are marked as productive starting from um, Java 15. But 
here it's good to give some comment about that. If you take an OpenJDK build from Oracle, then you will find the set there, but Shenandoah is eliminated from that build. Uh, Adopt OpenJDK, that's the one which I'm using, uh, has both. Um, on the other hand, um, Red Hat builds of OpenJDK, uh, they use Shenandoah uh, as a productive garbage collector already in um, version 11 and even in version 8. So in case in your company, uh, the older version of JDK is used, but um, built uh, Red Hat build, you can use that one as well. Now, maybe you ask question, okay, but why do we have so many garbage collectors? And uh, why do we have uh, two new ones? Are the other ones not enough? Yes, the question is uh, how much you can accept the pauses? Yes, because the other ones, okay, Epsilon is very special, but you normally wouldn't use it. Um, uh, those ones, they have typically a pauses and the pauses, yes, depends how big is your hip can be can be inconvenient, can be too long, like few hundred milliseconds or one second or more. Uh, the, uh, the, the two, Shenandoah and Z, are low pause garbage collectors. What does it mean? That the pauses are meant to be short. And for example, <clears throat> here um, it's a running class visualizer running on Shenandoah. You can see that the pauses are yes, far below one millisecond, 0. One to millisecond. Everything else is concurrent work, is concurrent to the application. Uh, in case you have further interest in uh, the topic of garbage collectors, it's a very important topic, I would say. Uh, there is an article which I wrote some time ago, it's still this year, beginning of this year, high performance at low cost. Yes, choose the best JVM and the best GC for your needs. Um, you can find it in Google search engine. It's published here, but the URL is a little bit long. Uh, and this article, it's, um, it's a quite deep analysis of uh, several um, JDKs and JVMs. So Hotspot, um, OpenJ9, uh, also Commercial Zinc, and then Substrate. And they are a lot of, of statistics, different aspects of analysis. You can you can look into all the details. And at the very end, there is some uh, rating also, a final score. And this is also worth to, uh, yes, of, of looking. You can find out how the different garbage collectors are rated based on the tests. And you can find out also that the new one, um, Shenandoah, is performing really very well. You can also find a Substrate VM here and the, the other one other ones. That's about garbage collectors. Now, what else? Okay, there are many, many different uh, features, with, or a couple of features which we will like to carefully examine. <coughs> um, by the way, the pictures which you can see, they, uh, they were taken in Ghana, in West Africa, during my trips there. So here it's an uh, example of the feature, which uh, real life feature, yes, a, a beautiful photo, everything excellent. But if you look into the world context, you see a little bit more than just the beautiful view. So we will examine now the uh, different features carefully. It's an action time, will be live coding time. And here you can also see some of the action which I had during my trips. Yes, I'm climbing to the top of the car, to the roof, and then that was the available way of traveling. I don't recommend you this, but I didn't have any other option at that moment. Good, so JShell, that's the that's my favorite IDE. Um, it's available in uh, as part of JDK. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, refer to some feature which was introduced already in Java 14 but it's good to to highlight it because it's it's something yes really worth of, of mentioning so i create an array and then i say for example that the second element i want to get and at one and then we see the famous blue pointer exception but in addition to the exception itself we see a little bit of explanation what happened 
So the comment says cannot load from long array. So in case of array, we exactly see the type because this value R is null. So if you uh, didn't have a chance to, to use this feature yet, I can say it's already good reason to uh, to use Java 14 or even better 15 to have the informative null pointer exceptions. Um, you need to switch them on and then you have nice explanation of the potential problems. Okay, that was Java 14. Now what about Java 15? Um, I will look for a for some hidden enum uh, with help of class visualizer, of course. It's called feature. Is you see, it's part of JDK internal, and we can see what a preview features we have in Java 15. Okay, text blocks are mentioned here. Text blocks are no more uh, preview features, and they are announced to be um, fully released fully functional feature. For some reason, I think there is a good reason why it's still mentioned a preview. And then there are a few others which we will be focused on. Uh, pattern matching in instance of, records, and sealed classes. Let's start with text blocks. Um, you know, when I was using, when I started to use Perl, that was end of uh, 90s, somehow in, in 90s, and Perl already had this feature, text blocks and uh, variable interpolation as part of, of it. Mm, I would like to use it, but first, for a moment, short moment, I will use it from Groovy. The feature is not new. It exists in Groovy for more than 10 years. Uh, the same about Scala and uh, Kotlin since the beginning. So in Groovy, I would like now to, uh, to use some JSON, and then we will use the same in Java. Uh, I will say that I have variable e, it will be event, event is juke, and now that's the beginning of my text block, and I say that my event is very convenient, right? I can use now my, my double quotes in JSON, there are always a lot of double quotes, that's my event, and I close the text block. It's very simple one, and is processed by Groovy as I would expect. I see the, the E and I see here value joke. The, this variable was interpolated here. Excellent. Now let's try to do the same in Java. Oh, I see error. Illegal text block open delimiter. Missing line terminator. What does it mean? Okay. In Java, it's a, it's a very exceptional thing, I must say. I have to press a new line before I can use um, the, ex, uh, the text block. Okay, then text block again, and I close it. Okay, here is my text block. So forget about variable interpolation. It doesn't exist in Java, still not. Um, but what else is interesting to see is that here we have a, a new line at the end. And my question is why? Why I don't have new line here and I have it here, right? It's a little bit surprising that this one is not taken while this one is taken. So it's already some inconsistency here. Okay, if I would like to get rid of this, I have to, to do some tricks, maybe something like this. It's, it's not nice at all but it's more or less, yes, what I could expect, okay, without end line. But it's definitely not nice. Um, maybe some other string, for example, some SQL statement. Let's say select start from, from something or there by ID, and then if, only if I close my line here, oh, let's, let's do it first like that. I see here always some indentations, which are not nice, but 
If I add some spaces here, then they are gone. Okay. Yes, a little bit of 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 magic. Um, yes, but still, I'm not happy about this uh, this endline character at the end. Um, that's that's about the block. Is it is it um, is it fully functional? Is it is it helpful? Would it increase our productivity? So, since I use this feature already since years, uh, I can say I'm confused with this feature in Java. It's uh, for me, it's not really a, a feature which is ready. And yes, um, could be improved or even not only could, even should be improved. Uh, as part of the text blocks feature, there were also few methods introduced. Um, if you remember Java 5, Java 1.5, that was more than 15 years ago, there was a famous method introduced there format. The method was and still is very useful until today. And it was already quite late when it was introduced, but yes, good that it was. And we can say, for example, that we want to uh, to format something. And in this case, I would like to format a number to have it always uh, three digits after a comma. And then I give some number. And it's nicely formatted. So it's surrounded and it's formatted with three digits after comma. And this is already since Java 1.5. And now you may notice that there is a new method, method formatted. Hmm. What is this method about? Let's do the following small uh, test. We will try to format a time now. Time is in seconds, uh, 128 seconds. And we would like to format a time that way that we have uh, minutes. And then we have we have seconds always on two digits. And there is always a leading zero. And now we can use the new method formatted, which is generally equivalent to that method, just 15 years later. And then we say that we give 16, uh, sorry, seconds divided by 60 and seconds uh, modulo 16 and this is our time yes so 128 seconds is two minutes and zero eight seconds that's the new method uh, how what is the value of the method i don't think it's a it's a big value but yes you can now enjoy the instance method formatted there is another one which was introduced also which is uh, allows to translate so-called escapes Let's try to use that one. So I can put some uh, some text, in this case, double backslash, and I say translate escapes, and I see very nice exception. And exception is telling me that, that this is invalid escape sequence, but this is actually a valid character. It's not a escape sequence and this one is is a total bug um, so there is no character zero in this one or if we try to use it again with maybe some other maybe some tap we also have exception here so generally this this feature if you look at it or when i'm looking at it i'm actually asking myself a question is it a, a new feature or new bug? And here in this particular case, the, it shows something, what happened, something something very sad ha happened actually, that to the class string, the method was added, which is first was not tested properly, and second was not, uh, there was lack of good proper code review. And this is already a very important lesson for all of us who are developing code it's very important that we are uh, that we have tests, proper tests, and that we have a code review. By the way, I spent quite a lot of time doing code reviews. So, just by code review, uh, if I looked into the the function, the, this this method, it was clear that it's it's smelling. Um, I can um, 
okay i do a import static system out when i do it out print ln then the string as shown before uh, with maybe something else we can of course print and everything is is correct and of course the the escape sequence is properly replaced so that's about uh, text blocks and all the related stuff so if if we look into this feature and we would like to to say how how complete or how useful is this feature i would say is is not not really not really in good condition it's, it's sold as as a feature but in fact it looks more like this one like like a nice bug um, especially that this feature exists in other jvm languages so if we have a comparison we see that is yes it's a broken feature okay let's take a look at the other features so the other ones which are pattern matching in instance of records and sealed class sealed classes we will look at them in this order they are all they have all something to do with so-called pattern matching now what is pattern matching and um, is a feature which is very well known in scala uh, world so i open here a documentation from from scala and yes pattern matching is one of the of the chapters um i think this explanation is really good i can recommend it to you if you are curious what is pattern matching because in java i don't see a, a good enough um, explanation what is that and i see some pieces but not a, a full picture and we will we will notice in the moment that um, most of the things which we are now um, analyzing and evaluating in Java has its roots here in Scala. So, instance of, um, let's take a look at how we could use this um, instance of, I will implement one method. Uh, let's call it is null or empty. And as a parameter can be we can give any object and now the method has to determine is the object null or empty so if it's null then it's very simple but now i would like to check if my object maybe is an instance of string and this instance of we know that's that's nothing new, exists since always, but now what is new is that I can define a variable. In case O is instance of string, then we have a variable S, which is string, and I can check if the string is, for example, blank. As you can see, auto-completion works here, means everything is recognized is valid. Uh, no. Or maybe O is instance of a collection, collection C. Then I would like to verify if C is empty. And that's my implementation of the method. Let's try to use it. First of all, on null. Uh, it's true, of course, null is, is null. Uh, some blank string as well. True. Maybe some empty collection. And now some collection with some element set with one element. Oh, now it's false. Now we have something. So if we look into this particular feature, I would say this one is quite interesting. I think it's 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 clean, it's easy to use. There are no surprises when I'm using it. It's a nice one. Uh, for the meantime, it's a preview feature, so you cannot use it yet in productive code, but hopefully it remains and we can uh, we can use it. Um, let's move to the next one, which is now record. What is record? Does the the word record look some sound somehow 
familiar. I would say, for me, yes. Uh, we'll open one screen. You know, it was almost 30 years ago when I was using Pascal. And the word record was, was there. It was one of the keywords. Uh, what is also nice is that uh, even now there is a free variant of Pascal, free Pascal with the great IDE, similar to Turbo Pascal, and is possible to write a program in Pascal. And when I do that, I feel like 30 years younger. Wow. Immediately, like a, you know, elixir of youth. And so the word is taken from, from Pascal, nice. But what does it mean? A concept is also um, mentioned here, actually. It's equivalent to case class from Scala, or in case of Kotlin, it would be something what is called uh, data class. Let's find data classes in Kotlin documentation. Yes, something like, like that, which is a data holder, generally. It's, it's meant to hold data. We generally define some properties. And what is typical for, for those data classes uh, in Kotlin or case classes in Scala that they have methods like equals, hash code, and to string generated, as well as uh, access or methods, methods which allow us to get the values. Uh, this is an example of a string representation. This is how it looks in Kotlin. In Scala, it looks uh, similar, as well as in Groovy. If we do a, a to automatic to string generation. Now, I'm doing, I'm defining a record person. And let's say that there is a name, person has a name, and parent. And I have to still put those two special characters and Okay, uh, I'm actually replacing um, this one. Okay, good, now it's successful. But we can also do something more uh, if we want. We can also add our methods. And in this case, I would like to add a constructor, which will take the name. In the moment, we will investigate it a little bit further. What, what is really this this um, record person. And in this case, I will invoke some other constructor, which is uh, automatically generated with the given name. And I put a null as a parent. So here I'm referring to two generated code. Now I do another method implement another method. Let's call it get name in uppercase. And here I will, I can use name, the field, or I can use also a method called name. We will see it in the moment. I will use field and to uppercase. Okay, and record is implemented. Now let's do some instance. First person, new person, and let's call it Adam, the first person. And here we can see the string representation. And the difference between uh, Java string representation and all the other JVM languages is, is this one, this square bracket. Okay, uh, what methods do we have? Okay, we have, um, yes, equals hash code and, and two string, they are, they, they are always there, uh, but we will see in the moment that they are implemented, string, we see this is implemented, and we have also, for example, name and parent those two additional uh, methods which are corresponding to the to those two fields or properties now let's create one new one more person new 
this person will have a name which I like is set and the parent is Adam. Okay, and now if I create, for example, some collections called shortcut of people, set of person one and person two, then here already the string representation of set is a little bit confusing, right? Because this, um, this parent is, uh, is representing set, while this one is, for example, representing object. <coughs> <coughs> so, which one is, re is related to which one is already confusing? I would say that um, the choice here is not, is not very um, fortunate. I think the one which is in all the other JVM languages is, is already proved to be, to be a good one. Now, let's say I would like to find out in, if my group of people contains Uh, a person, but now I will describe this person a little bit. I will create a new object, person. I will say the name is set and the parent is new person called Adam. And I'm asking now, do I have such, such a person in my set of people and the answer is true yes we have and, and this is um, this proves the two things uh, one that the hash code is implemented because set uses hash code two that equals is implemented and uh, in equals is not only that compares the the name but it's a, a deep equals deep hash code and deep equals it looks into the referenced objects in this case another person and also makes equals there so uh, I would say the, the quality of the generated um, equals and, uh, and hash code is good. It works well. This is a, a nice thing. Now let's take a look at uh, this record person from a little bit other perspective. We will look at it in class visualizer to examine it a little bit deeper from the, based on the bytecode. What we can notice here, person extends record. Okay, record is a, what is record? Let's click on record. Oh, it's an abstract class. It has a empty constructor, which actually does nothing. And it has three abstract methods. So there is generally no special content. It's, it could be interface as well. Okay, that's the base class for each record. Now when I look, click at uh, person, then what we can find here? Okay, the class is final. It has a special flag, new flag record. We can see the two fields, name and, and parent, which I, which I defined. And the method which I defined is yes, get name in uppercase is actually a property, is a read-only property. But we can already notice here that something is missing, that this name and parent, they are not the properties. Why? I don't know why, but it's not what I would expect. Yes, it's part of Java Beans standard that, um, yes, for fields we have the properties and pretty much every framework expects that. But unfortunately, a record doesn't follow that convention, which already makes it incompatible with existing frameworks. Um, so if we look at it, there is one aspect that uh, there is a parent class, which is record. Those fields, they are immutable. You cannot have a record which has mutable fields and the fields are not a properties. Okay, those are the characteristics. What happens now if we look uh, at the equivalent um, data class implemented in a Kotlin? I did it as an exercise. And here we can see it in the right from object. 
So we can we can inherit any class. We are not limited. Um, and name and parent, they are properties, the same as naming uppercase. So in case you use um, this particular feature from Kotlin, then you have all the all the uh, fields actually as a properties available as a properties means compatible with all the frameworks. What also is worth to mention is that they can be mutable. So in this case, name uh, I define this as, as a mutable is it's final, but it's a it's a property which has getter etc. On the other hand, parent is read only. Parent is only getter. And in case of Kotlin and as well as in Scala, such data holders they may have mutable uh, properties. This is allowed. That's the that's the difference. So I would say here is also already uh, some limitation of of Java as comparing to um, to Kotlin or to uh, Scala. Okay, that was uh, that was record. What else? What what next? New feature is the sealed class. Okay, uh, sealed classes it also exists in in Scala. So here is an example. Here you can see that there is a, a sealed class, and then the case class means equivalent of record. You can extend this sealed class. They they generally fit very well together. Um, in Kotlin, let's find sealed class in Kotlin here. Sealed classes. It's also equivalent example. Uh, what is maybe worth to mention that there is something uh, special about sealed classes. Sealed class is such a class that all the uh, children, all the subclasses are known. And in case of Kotlin and Scala, what does it mean? It means that the sealed class and all the subclasses must be implemented in the same source file, in the same file. Um, and then compiler knows that, okay, this class has those subclasses and that's the complete tree of subclasses or the same here. In Scala is exactly the same. They have to be implemented in the same. Uh, fine. Now in Java, it is somehow different. In Java, uh, okay, sealed classes, super, but they don't have to be in the same file, but they have to be either in the same package in when we are using the traditional class loader world, or they have to be in the same module if we are using uh, modules. So I will implement some sealed class. Let's call it vegetation. And having it, uh, it's not enough. It's already some error. Okay, Java is very special. In Java, I have to say what subclasses are permitted. Okay, that's that's unusual, at least. And I would say it's, it's overhead. Let's say, okay, my sealed class vegetation permits land and tree. I have to add comma here. Okay, that's fine, now accepted. Then I will say that I would like to have class plant, which extends vegetation. Is that enough? No, unfortunately not. Why? I don't understand why. Because in Kotlin and in Scala, that would be enough, but not in Java. In Java, I have to say that this class is either sealed again, but probably is not what I want, or is non-sealed. Yes, I would expect it to be non-sealed, or that is final. Okay, now what is this non-sealed? It looks somehow strange for me, but let's try to add it. Non-sealed 
Is it a valid keyword? It is valid, but it's in the wrong place. Uh, non sealed class plant. Ooh, okay. But what is that? It's very special, right? I never saw a, a dash before being allowed as a, as a part of the keyword. So this is something which when I see it, I immediately see a compile error and I would like to fix it. And then oh, I have to calm down that it's not a compile error. It's a, it's a new feature, non sealed class. Okay. Um, but looks really, really strange for me. And I don't understand why I have to put the, this word. Okay. Then let's do other class final, uh, which will be three. And this one also extends vegetation. Okay. So now my hierarchy is complete. And let's do new tree. Okay, I would like to do like this. Okay, look, I have it. Or new uh, plant also. But what about vegetation? Can I create a new instance of vegetation? Yes, I can. But does it make sense? That's the question. In case of uh, Kotlin, uh, sealed classes in Kotlin, they are abstract. And it makes sense because, because the, the, the root class, the sealed class is more like a marker. So it, it doesn't have any, typically any specific meaning. So in Kotlin, it is abstract. In Scala, as far as I know, it doesn't need to be abstract. Uh, but in most cases it would be because it, as I said, it doesn't have much, much uh, sense without being abstract. What is also maybe worth to mention that sealed classes, uh, sealed can be not only classes in, um, in uh, Java, but also interfaces. So I can also say sealed interface i don't know what now think permits something um, uh, something and uh, yes this sealed inter interfaces is okay so um sealed idea of sealed classes or interfaces it also fits into the wall uh, pattern matching concept and also into so-called records. Although records are limited in Java because they don't allow to inherit from what we want, but uh, records can implement interfaces. So in that case, we can do a workaround in Java to get something similar like in uh, Scala and have a sealed interface and then the record which implements interface. Okay, can be done a little bit in over complicated way, but doable. So, uh, but if we would like to ask ourselves how useful is this feature, the sealed classes, can you benefit from it? I would say in the current form, it's, it's I would say not even half a feature. It's just a broken feature, which is introduced, which is supposed to be part of something bigger, but as itself is not really useful. It's anyway a preview, so you can you cannot use it in, in typical code. Uh, then records also have to be improved. Instance of which we looked is, is fine, is good. And then the, the text blocks, which are no more preview, but yes, um, they have to be um, improved. Now, um, is Java 15 worth of trying? That's the, the question. Um, here you can see um, a car. I was I was a passenger passenger of this car. It was a little bit scary to go with it, but driver was very much relaxed. So I, as a passenger from from Europe, was was scared. But 
the driver was relaxed because he knew that the, the car was driving for last 25 years and will still drive. So it's a little bit similar like with Java. We have a, a lot of broken features, but the engine, which is the core, in case of Java is JVM, is, is a very straight, stable, is, is working uh, very well. So um, should we try Java 15? I would say yes, of course. I'm using Java 15 all the time uh, since it was released or even before. Um, uh, if if we would like or you would like to see which version of which build I'm using, I'm using Adopt Open JDK to have all garbage collectors. By the way, it's also interesting because sometimes I hear an opinion that uh, Java has a, a long start time. Uh, is that so? No. 29 milliseconds. Okay, is that long? Yeah, I, I don't think it's long. Or if we would like to to see more text, okay, 56 milliseconds. So Java is has a really fast start now. Uh, not only 15 is already a couple of versions before. Uh, then yes, of course, you should use Java 15. You have a newest JVM with garbage collectors, the newest ones, always. Uh, a lot of bugs fixed. All, also, they are new bugs. Yes, that's that's life. Um, improvements in JDK tools. There are always new features. For example, my my J shell, my preferred IDE has new features which I'm happy about. Um, always compiler is is improved. So, uh, and you can always compile the code with Java 15 compiler back to version 11 or 8. Always works. So, yes, worth of trying. But please remember about possible options or alternatives. So that you can always choose your favorite JVM. Always try different JDKs, not only one, as well as programming languages. So if uh, you are uh, disappointed by the new features of Java 15, uh, then then you have alternatives and this is really excellent that you can choose Kotlin for example which is a very modern language very well designed by the way uh, people who who are working on on uh, Kotlin uh, they are people who were formerly working at Sun and they were involved they were working on Java and other uh, Sun tools so those are really top level specialists and they know what very well what mistakes were done in Java and they just make best efforts to not repeat the same mistakes again. So Kotlin is definitely a very good alter alternative to be used. Uh, Groovy is another possible one, which uh, actually those are my two top candidates, I would say. Kotlin, Groovy, and then it's also Scala, which uh, is very good as well, but maybe interoper interoperability with Java is, is not 100%. So Kotlin and Groovy is 100%, and Scala is less. So you have different options. Always uh, you can choose what uh, fits you best. And we are coming now to questions and answers. Maybe our our host can help us with some best questions, more favorite questions. So thank you very much actually for your presentation. It was quite interesting and you said yeah, that's actually a great idea. So your voice gets better in the time when I'm talking. So you said that you're using uh, Java 15 all the time. What does that mean? Are these like the production applications you use or are they uh, applications you would use um, for your customers? They run in production or what kind of things you were talking about when you say I'm using Java 15 all the time? Uh, okay. Uh, I think the question is uh, is good. It points to, to a to a, to a good um, maybe detail. Um, I was not fully precise with what I said. Okay, I use it all the time as long as I'm using my private laptop. <laughs> by, by customers, however, it's not always uh, so uh, that I can use my private laptop sometimes. Um, customers are making me happy by giving me own laptop pre-configured and um, of course <laughs> Java 15 <laughs> is not always there and then of course I cannot use it uh, that's that's uh, that's true and maybe to say 
for what Java 15 would fit. Definitely, it can be used on development environments. So if any of, of you are developing, is developing something using whatever IDE, JShell, or, or uh, IntelliJ, or, or whatever, um, then you have uh, always the newest improvements. So the improvements, there is always some focus on performance, on fixing of the bugs. So typically, there will be some benefit, some sometimes smaller, sometimes bigger. Here, bigger, biggest benefit is a new um, garbage collector, which is Shenandoah. Um, so I, I would say, and of course, the compiler always uh, generates um, or has improvements. So generated bytecode is, byte is always better. So vers version 15 versus 11 oh, is, is big difference already. So that's, that's the benefit. In production, I would say there are no breaking changes uh, with one exception. Between uh, version 15 and the previous version, one exception is uh, NAS Home Engine. It was removed. Uh, so yes, if there is a code which uh, relies on NAS Home Engine, um, then yes, it will not work. Uh, out of the box will not work. It requires some adoption. For example, Graal VM would be a good uh, choice in that case. You also mentioned, before I jump into the other questions we have in the Q&A section, you also mentioned that you're using JShell quite often. Is it then also more like when you play around with Java and try out new features that you want to have immediate feedback without creating classes and so on? Or what's actually your use case for using JShell all the time? Okay, uh, maybe I can switch on the screen again. And uh, it's pretty much, I would say, when I'm working, I have uh, always JShell somehow available on. I, 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 I never switch it off or when I started, it's always there. Uh, let's say um, I would like to, to check a, a regular expression, right? So I would like to, to see if my, if my word like that would, or text like that would, would match a regular expression like, for example, like this. Uh, so just worked. And and here the answer will be no, it, it, it will not match. No, because I have a, a, a space which is not a, a word character. So, or I would like to, I don't know, uh, I would like to check something from um, big integer, big integer, and for example, I take a number 2023, and uh, of course, yes, I'm not in Kotlin now, if not in Scala, I'm in Java. I think it should be a string, right? Uh, yes, I. There is uh, that should be, but there is also value of value of. Yes. So, for example, I'm interested if it's a prime uh, number or not, and then it's probable prime and then I have to give the number of of tries for example nine tries and it gives me that this one is probably not prime uh, number so if I like to try you see I can I can try I do uh, I can do mistakes <coughs> it's, it's, it's normal I have also Java doc available here so I can read for example what what is this method about? So everything what I need to try, I have here. I don't need to, to write a class or test case, I compile it and run it, and then look into console. I have everything here, what, what I need to, to try. Or yes, how long is this, this string? Yes, everything mm -hmm. is, is at my fingers. Great, thank you. So let's just jump into the other ones um, in the questions. So Xavier is asking, it's not about Java 15 related, but um, is there any clarity when value type might be available? Uh, I don't know. Okay. So I also don't know either. Cannot answer. Uh, what's the nature of interop issues when you saw with Java and Scala? Ah, interop. Uh, yes. Um, very good question. So. Scala has own types, which means um, in case of Scala, everything inherits uh, from type, which is called any. Uh, maybe I will try to, to do a screen sharing again. Um, 
everything in the right from type any. And everything may work more or less if you stay only with numbers. But as long as you would go to collections, I don't see, I don't know if I can jump easily here, probably no, but as long, uh, as soon as you jump into collections, for example, mm -hmm. Scala has a totally different uh, collection types and uh, they have to be then converted to Java types. If you would like to, if you, if you have a collection coming from, from Scala and you, you want to use some Java library now, which works with Java types, you have uh, totally different types. They are not matching each other. On the other hand, uh, Kotlin uses uh, Java collections as well as Groovy. So it's 100% interoperability. You have, a, for example, a, a Kotlin list and you invoke a, a Java library, you give the list. Underneath is a Java type. In case of Scala, underneath is a Scala type. Is something what Java doesn't know about. Okay. Then uh, let's go to the next one. Um, Otmar is saying, if I recall correctly, records were designed as immutable from the very beginning. Why did you emphasize on them being not mutable? Uh, I compare it to the equivalent uh, solution in Kotlin and Scala. So uh, we are comparing features which are introduced to existing features which were sort of inspir inspiration, right? So if I know that record or I see that record is inspired by Scala, there are also some implementation similarities there. Uh, and I see that something what I have in Scala doesn't exist. For me, it's a limitation, which I would like to mention because somebody else could also have be surprised. Oh, wow, why I cannot have a mutable field. So uh, it could be designed like that. Yes, sure. But uh, it's a limited version uh, as comparing to um, data class or case class from Kotlin and Scala. Great. Um, which of the Java 15 preview features do you expect in Java 16? <laughs> uh, okay, let's try to, uh, to answer this question in the best way. Um, the best way would be to, to share my screen again. Okay. Uh, so that's the current, current uh, version or um, content, let's say proposed feature for JDK 16. And um, so far, I don't see anything about the, the features from Java 15. So I don't try to, to guess anything, but for me, they are all incomplete, especially that they are meant to be part of uh, of pattern matching. And I don't see anything about pattern matching so far. So uh, difficult to guess, but uh, I wouldn't expect them to be uh, to be final in, in JDK 16. But maybe I will be surprised like with text blocks in Java 50. Okay, let's find out. So, um... I think we have to like provide feedback on this and if they are already good enough, so they might be there by then. And the other question from Paul was, uh, what is the state of Project Loom in Java 15? Sorry? Project Loom, uh, he's talking about um, fibers or this lightweight threats. So in, they are called now. in, pro in, in JDK 15, uh, let's move to to screen, I share. Uh, we can move to features in in the topic of uh, um, let's say uh, blocking and so on. There was one one element disable the package plus just blocking. Uh, generally, that's all what was there. So uh, I I cannot say more than than I know from the from the uh, uh, yes features which were um, included in in JDK 15 and since the version is complete then whatever uh, you would expect then yes coming the next releases. Um, I have seen some early access builds and some colleagues of mine already tried out migrating applications from Tomcat to 
to, to fibers or lightweight threads. Um, so something is already there, but I think not in Java 15, but probably in, in the early access builds of Java 16 then. I would have to check, but maybe somebody knows as well from the chat, but there were already some early access builds you could download actually. So access build uh, of Java 16, I didn't download yet. It is very uh, likely that they are. Uh, I don't see anything about that topic, but but what is maybe good to uh, to mention that threat management generally uh, different is is very much different on uh, Unix systems. So I can say more about Linux because I use Linux versus Windows. Um, so on Linux, each generally each thread, each Java thread is a, a separate process and. Uh, Yes, um, can be advantage or disadvantage, depends how you look into that. Uh, while on, on Windows, it is it is generally a, a threat within existing process. So, um, if, is it is it um, how much uh, needed is it is or, or so? I can say I'm using uh, Java on, on Linux uh, all the time and I'm very happy with the performance. So, yes, maybe on Windows, uh, it's a different thing, but but on on Linux, I would say doesn't look bad so far from the performance uh, point of view. So but actually, I'm not I am not uh, deep into this project. Must I must say so cannot cannot uh, also dig into the details. Yes. So Reto was probably also just googling as I did, and when you go for the JDK Java Net slash Loom, then actually you will find early access builds for Java 16. Um, on on Project Loom, and I mean Oracle says always um, it's actually the the counterpart to the reactive movement and to keep the the creation of threads more lightweight, and they just mean actually that we don't need reactive streams at all. We just could actually do everything with fibers because um, you could have like millions of fibers in your app. But yeah, actually, that's quite interesting. I know some people, you can check on, on, on Google or on Twitter, they did some um, trials. Some parts, they failed, some things, they they um, they were successful. So there are already some stories out, but as I said, it's really just early access, very early access. Um, yeah, so we don't have more questions in the Q&A section, so we are already through. And yeah, so that would mean actually we we are going to close the show. So is that fine for you, Jonathan? Yes, thank you very much for, for all your attention. Thank you. Thank you for having you and that we could actually like even have this nice presentation in, in the chase shell. It was kind of a different experience. And what I also realized is that people stayed quite a long time. So we didn't really have drops um, during the presentation phase. And this is actually quite a nice, a nice thing. So thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, for everyone else who still thank you stays- for the of all the colleagues. <laughs> yeah, and, and for everyone who still stays in the channel, um, we will have um, this talks because of our sponsors. And I also want to say thank you for the sponsors. Thank you to Ursula and Marcus behind the scenes. Thank you for, uh, for your presentation, Jonathan, and approach me um, to, to provide us some content we can also share during these special times. And just make sure when you leave the room, there is actually a feedback form. Fill it out, please, and provide us feedback. So because we want to learn from you and we will improve in the future. Thank you very much. But and question, how many attendees do we have? How many? We had, we had 92 in the in the chat, oh, and um, yeah, that that's like 50% showed up, and everyone else will join on YouTube later. So that's quite nice. Yeah, nice, good numbers. So yeah. then we will we will close the webinar, and I think um, Marcus will kick us out. Oh,